I'm going to talk um, about the ESP project we did at Suva. Suva is a Swiss insurance uh, company. Um, we are just in the Swiss market. Um, the company was founded um, back in 1918, uh, right after World War I. Um, we have a, a payroll, an insured payroll of 140 billion um, Swiss francs. That's about the same in dollars. And this is backed up with uh, 40 billion of uh, investments. So, um, in compared to SO2, we acquired a dinosaur, 100 years in business. Um, and with that, um, we had some challenges uh, with web services we started about 10 years ago. So in the next 20 minutes, I'd like to bring you some um, aspects of our success story with WSO2 ESP. Um, Sanjeeva told yesterday that they have uh, 22 products uh, in their platform again, um, at the moment. So for us, the ESP is still the key player of, uh, of this. Um, so what was our business problem in 2010? We had uh, a lot of web services, um, and each of them uh, had different security standards. Uh, some of them uh, had implemented the WSS standard, some not. Um, it ended up to a bunch of incompatible peers. Um, and as the web service thing came up, uh, it shows like a brave new world, but that uh, seemed not to be true. It came to be vanish. So we just called our company the old spaghetti factory. We had uh, more than 30 different platforms that are, talk that are communicating over web services. And we had to bring some some streamlining in it. Um, this slide uh, we've seen with many presentations, uh, the many-to-many -many, um, relationship we have between all our stakeholders. Um, we run almost every system <laughs> that's out there from Java platforms, .NET platforms, um, IBM FileNet, SAP systems, uh, a core Java insurance system. Um, so it's not easy to to bring all them on the one hat. Um, we needed a plan B after five years um, with handling with web services. We call it the plan ESP. Um, we had to put the ESP in the middle of all this. So like a kind of man in the middle. All had to know the ESP. All had to trust him. And on the other side, the ESP knows all its peers. So we separated the peers from each other. Then we came to this picture that was um, quite much more uh, cleaned up, but we still had the problem um, with the security. So different kind of, of uh, peers um, still use different kind of um, mechanism to, to provide user propagation. So if, you're, if a user is locked in in, uh, in one system, and maybe it's an SAP system, and then they had to call uh, a backend web service from another system. SAP um, provides an SAP logon token. So, but the other systems, um, because it's proprietary, the token, they couldn't uh, read this token or assert a user that's in these tokens. So, we had to. Yeah, we had two opportunities. Two opportunities to solve that. Uh, the first one was uh, we forced all the peers that they adhere to the standards. And the second one was to find a way that they don't have to. Um, if we had chosen the first one, I think we, we were still begging today that they adhere to standards. Um, so fortunately, we took the second way. And uh, we call it a decoupling trust. So if maybe an SAP um, client is sending its token to the ESP. We, we've implemented with custom mediators some asserters on the ESP that are reading the tokens that we get. We assert the token, take the user information out of it, and depending on the backend, we are creating a new kind of token. Um, we have some uh, salted tokens that are just um, tokens that are based on chat secrets. We can uh, create some uh, standard watches assertion tokens out of it. Um, yeah, name it. If you need a new token, you just 
um, program a new custom mediator and create a token for, or, or uh, something that the backend is uh, understanding. So the core of this is um, a six different kind of incoming interceptors that can handle the incoming security uh, credentials. Um, eight kind of different outgoing interceptors, we call them bearer, like a SAML sender watches assertion, like uh, a proprietary token from a backend. And these um, custom mediators are high, highly configurable over ESP sequences. So if you have, um, if I go back here, we c just can configure that uh, an ESP proxy uh, accepts all kind of tokens, and if it's uh, a proxy that communicates to the, our core system, it just creates the needed uh, security credential to propagate the user information that came in to the backend. So what happens on the ESP if a request comes in? Um, the sequence is calling different kind of asserters, custom mediators. Each of them is trying to, to read and assert the token. If one of them is successful, uh, he takes out the user data and stores it to the synapse context. Um, as a second step, based on the backend backend's need, um, there's another mediator that takes out the user data from the synapse context, creates a token or something that the backend understands, and pushes it to the access context or to the message uh, as well. Um, on the right hand side, maybe it's too small to read, but it's uh, just a main sequence that um, is calling a bunch of subsequences um, that are asserting the tokens that we are, we are getting from the consumers. So that's the same approach as well. So what happens inside the ESP? Let me overwrite this. So that's a Hello World sample of uh, just a simple uh, basic out um, mediator. Um, it's less than 30 lines of code to access the credentials that is coming in from the user or from the consumer system. Um, behind that, there's some more logic that's going on, but uh, more or less all the mediators are just fit on a screen. So what, was, or what is the implementation performance we are getting out of this? Um, we can run it uh, with web services and as well with RESTful APIs. We just have to, to plug the sequences um, that it fits for the needs we, we see. It's easy to use. Uh, if, if one sequence is created one time, we just can add it uh, with one line of code to each proxy service definition we need it. We, 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 need, we need it. The gains we took out of it, um, before we solved this through the WSO2 ESB, um, security propagation was really a pain. We had to handle the many-to-many -many relationships. Um, some of the customers or consumers couldn't uh, um, achieve the needs that they or the security that to bring to call a back-end service. Um, we are very flexible to, to bring in new requirements. So as a next step, um, we are planning to set up an API manager in front of the ESP um, that we can expose uh, services to the outer world. Um, and then we are planning that the API manager is creating a JSON web token and sending that into the ESP. And the ESP handles that again to communicate with the backends. And so the backends they don't have to understand JSON web tokens. They just can go on with their um, credentials they, they, know, they knew and they, they accept. If it comes to production, deployment is always uh, a point that's worth to have a look at. Um, it's just quite simple. The deployment unit is just a zip file. Um, we're willing it through Maven, um, controlled by a Jenkins process. Um, Sorry, all the custom mediators um, are built in char file. 
um, that is deployed just to the component slip directory, the standard of the ESP. And all other artifacts, like the ESP sequences, security policies, um, are within one uh, Carbon application file. We deploy it. We deploy this just um, through the file system directly onto the ESP. Um, why have we chosen WSO2 ESP? Um, back in 2010, um, we set up a list of criteria. Criteria the bus has to to bring. Um, one of the most important was it has to be lightweight and easily extendable. Um, we had some buses, uh, or oh, one bus before in the company, and for each uh, extension point we, we like to have with the other product, we, we had to call the sales department of the vendor, and <laughs> that was really a pain. So we were all Java people, and now we can just have some pocho and uh, extend the ESB. And one most important point was the bus has to be used and carried by an active community. Um, if you have a problem or an issue, you're never the first that's facing that, is that issue. Um, with the whole WSO2 community, you still find someone who solved that problem or that issue before. As well, the vendor was really important to our management. If it comes to um, open source, uh, that management always has concerns. They, they need some, someone to blame if something is not going, uh, not going right. So the point that WS2 was almost five years in business then, back in 2010, was, was really important for us. And uh, the vendor as well. So WS2 has to offer support, which is more than a promise. Um, we all know, or we all have been in endless loops with support organizations where you have to send in the same log files 10 times or, or more and never get to the people who, who can really solve the problem. Um, with WSO2, that's definitely different. I would say it's uh, kind of unique support they, they bring. Um, most support issues we have, uh, they're solved in less than two days. Uh, if it's, it's a long running thing, it's maybe a week or two, but then we have a patch. And most important was we need to have development support. So we are just four people that are running the ESB at Suva. Um, and we have other projects we do ne next to the ESB as well. So uh, it's always great to have uh, some brains in the background um, where it just can wrote, write an email or open a support case and uh, they might help you how to solve or how to, how to go to a certain problem. So it comes to management. We started in 2010 with the requirements list. Um, did an evaluation POC in spring 2011 um, with a one week of WSO2 quick start program. And within it, this week, uh, we created the core of the mediation um, platform. Um, from that on, um, we had some, some more things to do. Uh, went to production in September 2011. And from that on, all our internal consumers and providers could smoothly uh, join the ESP. Um, we started small and grown up uh, since then. So, yeah, that's the growth of the web service proxies we have on the ESP. We started really slow, had uh, about 50 services after one year, uh, and then it rose up steadily. Um, we are now running 200 um, distinct web services per month um, with about 350 um, different uh, operations. So per month, these are 30 million calls. That's about 1 million call, calls a day. Um, most of them are running uh, through the security sequences. Yeah, some key figures about the company. Um, as I talked before, uh, 
we are about 3,000 employees running two company-owned clinics. Um, yeah, and the ESP really helps us to, to bring or to, to stay in the market. Yeah, so that's...